All right, welcome back to another episode of the Paycheck Today Check podcast. Today we are going to be talking about something that I personally am very passionate about, and I think that this community really needs a little refresher on, and that is how to up-level your customer service skills in the year 2023. We want to make you guys customer service pros, and I think we have a lot of good tips for you in this episode, so let's get into it. One of the hardest things when you are reselling is not to take things personally. It's difficult when you're selling online. My past customer service experience, I worked in at Payless Shoe Source, which side note, ironically, my parents and sister are in Barbados and they came across a Payless Shoe Source. But just seeing that really brought back a lot of memories. So I was a manager of there and you were face to face with the customer. So I feel like that was a lot easier to read body language, mm -hmm. read tone, things like that. When you're selling online, it's really difficult to know who's the person on the other side. You know, all they have is a computer and to reach out to you that way. So sometimes we forget that there is a person on the other side and not to take things too personally. When somebody is on the other side giving you an offer, they lowball you, you have an item for $75, they send you an offer for $10. Sometimes it's hard not to get upset and think, why is that person doing it? But remember to take a step back, don't take it personal, try to be as professional as possible, even though you wanna reach through and be like, why would you even send me a $10 offer when this is $75? Don't let your emotions take over when you get those lowball offers or you get somebody coming at you that is obviously upset. Yeah. I think that's really important and to not have an emotional attachment to your inventory either. You know, if we've hung on to something for too long, if it was like a really special purchase or whatever the reason is, I think a lot of us get really emotionally attached to our inventory. Um, but like you said, if someone sends you some ridiculous offer, you have it listed for 75, they send you a $10 offer. I find that a really good method into like starting opening up the communication with this person instead of, you know, being mad about it and insulting them or whatever the case is, reaching out to them with a counter offer and a message, not just sending them a number back. So I will send them a message saying, hi there, so-and-so, thanks so much for your offer. I really appreciate you checking out my store, closet, whatever it is. Uh, this item is in amazing shape, it's brand new, whatever, you know, something a little blurb about the item. I am unable to accept your offer of $10 on this item, but what I could do is offer you X amount and send them your counter offer back in a message like that, which opens up the door to a communication. Most people are pretty reasonable, and I know that I've gone on a crazy tangent before about my theory with like customers and buyers and sellers and whatever. It is the buyer's job to get this item for the lowest amount possible. That's what they're doing. They're trying to buy it from you for the lowest amount they can possibly get it. That's what we do as buyers too when we're outsourcing things or shopping for our families or whatever. We use coupons and discount codes and all that crap. Well, they're just doing the same thing. And it's our job as sellers to sell it for the most amount of money as we can. A sale will happen when those two sides meet in the middle and can agree on a number. So that's all you have to do is just get to a point where you are both happy and satisfied with the number that you agree on. All right. So the next thing that we have for you guys is to make sure that you are proactive. And this is so important. I mentioned before, reaching out with a counter offer, not just, you know, sending them a number. I feel that building a little rapport with the customer is being a bit proactive. That will also help eliminate issues down the line if that sale goes through, returns, whatever. If you open the door for communication with the buyer or potential buyer right away, right up front, they're more willing and more likely to reach out to you if there is another issue down the line, down the in, in the process of selling this item to them. So if you know that they are going to need this item quickly, like around this time of year, when we're recording this, it's like, I don't know, 10 days before Christmas or something crazy like that, message them when you drop the item off, like keep them informed in your steps. It takes 
a couple seconds, guys. It really doesn't take that long to just provide a little customer service to these people. Let them know, hey, I just dropped your item off at the post office. It got scanned in. You should see the tracking update pretty quick here. Um, I'll keep you updated if I have any more information. Let them know where you are and where their item is and what's going on. Um, if an item comes back to you, message them. Don't let them message you first because if you let them come to you first, it's going to be it'll have more of a negative tone to it. If you are proactive and positive and, hey, I, I saw that, you know, this item came back to me, you sent this back, or maybe the trapping stopped and the item stuck in, you know, freaking Washington, I don't know, whatever, and they're in California, like, hey, I saw that the tracking's a little wonky right now. I just wanted to let you know I'm checking it a couple times a day. If I get any other information, I will let you know right away. And they will appreciate that and they will thank you for that. But if they see it first and they reach out to you first, it's going to have a more <laughs> negative tone. It won't be that friendly, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I have two examples of that. So yesterday we accepted an offer on Macari and the woman said she wanted the shoes for her daughter for Christmas. So we countered, she accepted. I realized on Macari, you don't have to ship for three days. And I looked at the calendar and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know what I haven't bought on Macari. So I'm not sure what she saw on her end as to when that item was going to arrive. So I messaged her and told her, these are going to go UPS ground. I'm going to drop them off today. I want to get them out as fast as possible. And you should expect them next week, Tuesday, Wednesday. And she wrote back and was so thankful. She actually went to University of Arizona, had something in common. So you just never know when, you know, who is on the other side of the computer. And she just was very thankful. And then another time we, which I mentioned in the podcast when we were talking about shipping and shipping tips or shipping mistakes that we had, and I had sent something media mail, and then it came back to me with just the label on, the, on a piece of cardboard that was cut out from the box, that buyer hadn't even messaged us where it was. And it had taken a couple weeks. Also, buyers sometimes buy things and forget about them. So I was proactive. I went in, messaged a buyer, gave them their refund, and they left us positive feedback. So just always provide proactive customer service, and that's going to help in the end. Another thing is if you are about to ship out an item, and you notice a defect that you know you did not take a picture of or you didn't disclose in the description, don't just ship that item out. I oftentimes, if I do find something, even if it's very tiny, maybe there's just a little mark that I know will probably come out in the wash, but I don't want to wash the item because it's brand new and it's new with tags, I will message the buyer with an explanation of what I found along with a picture so they can get a better idea of it and still ask them, do you want this item? I would much rather do that and them say, oh yeah, and nine times out of 10, they will say, I still want the item. Thank you so much. Not a big deal. So it's just being proactive instead of shipping it out. And then it, the buyer gets it, notices that, and then they're going to be really upset. And then that in the end might result in a negative or a neutral feedback, especially on eBay. All right, here is a very controversial topic when it comes to customer service as a reseller. If you get a buyer on eBay with zero feedback, don't assume that they're not going to pay or they're going to scam you. We have to remember, we all start at zero. As a seller, you start with zero sales, zero feedback. We have to start somewhere. You don't know if this buyer is experiencing the platform for the very first time. We want as sellers to create a good buying experience for especially first time buyers. So when you are on eBay, if you don't sell on there and you're not familiar with this, if you send a buyer an offer and they accept, sometimes they have up to four days to pay for that item. And I know a lot of sellers get so angry. It is what it is. Until they change it, you just have to deal with it. But just because they have zero feedback and they accept an offer doesn't mean that they're not going to pay. So we need to remember that. Yeah. And I think especially new people, like we all started somewhere, right? Maybe they don't realize how eBay works entirely, you know? So 
giving them a little bit of grace and a little patience and maybe reach out to them if they don't pay in, you know, a day or two days or whatever your timeline is, reach out to them and say, you know, hey, thanks so much for your purchase. I'm so excited for you to get this item. I'd be happy to ship it out, you know, ASAP as soon as I receive payment for the item. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day. And then maybe that will prompt them like, oh, crap. I didn't even realize they accepted my offer. I need to go and pay them. And most of the time they're going to be like, holy cow, I'm so sorry. I totally missed the notification. I'm going to pay you right now. You know, it is rare that people don't pay for items. The reason why it doesn't seem rare is because you hear about it a lot from people that complain about it a lot. And that's why it seems like it happens all the time. I have literally had this happen one time where someone did not pay me for an item that they purchased for me. And that's it. Over thousands of items sold, one person didn't pay me. And I think that's pretty good odds, you know? But I also implement a lot of the tips that we're talking about now and being proactive and reaching out to people and just being nice, just being a nice human, you know, not assuming the worst in, in humanity. All right. The next thing that we have for you guys is. If you get angry at someone, that's okay, but don't get defensive and don't show your anger to them. It's okay to be irritated. It's okay to get upset. Just don't show your customer that. Instead, we recommend that you use the sandwich method. So this is actually Liz's idea. I've never heard of the sandwich method before. I actually made it up. That's amazing. Why? Yeah. You then? You I, just, I made it up because I'm like, I love the sandwich method. <laughs> Do you want me to explain it? Yes. So with the sandwich method, you don't want to come at the buyer right away and be defensive. You want to, you don't want the first thing that they're going to read to be something that's going to anger them. So in the sandwich method, you would start out with something positive, simply saying, I'm so sorry that that happened. How frustrating. I see that there is a tear in the shirt that I didn't notice. Give them a solution, what you're going to do. And then in the end, apologize again. So it's kind of like in the middle, explaining what you're going to do to fix the issue, giving them something that they can agree on. Maybe you're not going to fix it. Maybe, you know, what would you like me to do? I can do this or that. And then at the end, being nice again. So just really trying to pad your response with positivity is going to really help the buyer not be so angry. Yeah, that actually kind of reminds me of a tactic that I learned when I worked for a door-to-door -door company selling these like coupon books. I did that for like three and a half years and we learned a couple different strategies to overcome objections. And one of them was called the feel felt found method. So if someone gives you an objection like, oh, uh, we only go out to this restaurant like four times a year. My response to that would be, oh, I totally know how you feel. Actually, your neighbor Liz felt the same way, but she found if she used the coupon book even one time throughout the year, she was going to make her entire cost of the coupon book back. Plus, she would end up, you know, with a free pizza or whatever the deal was. So I know how you feel. Someone else felt the same way or I felt the same way or whoever the heck felt the same way. But what we found is what the solution is. And that's how you overcome the objection. So that really like just brought me way back to my door to door salesperson training. So thanks for that. I'm going to have flashbacks for the rest of the day. Okay. The next thing to remember when you are dealing with customers, reselling is a business. And sometimes in business, you have to do things that you know is not right but you need to do anyways. One of those could be you have to refund a buyer. Even though you know it's not your fault, they might have done something. But in the end, we have to remember it's a business. If you're a business owner, you have to do things sometimes that you don't want to do. That's with any business, a restaurant. Sometimes you, they will give a free meal. Does the business want to do that? No, but they want to make the customer happy. So in the end, we have to always think, what can we do to make this customer happy? Give them good customer service, a good buying experience. If we all start treating the buyers better, they're going to keep coming back to that platform. In addition to that, you know, sometimes... Liz kind of mentioned this, it's just easier to fix the problem, give them a solution instead of harping on it or trying to negotiate with the person. Sometimes it's easier to just fix it. 
settle it and move on. It's not worth your time. Your time is more valuable than arguing with a customer or going back and forth with eBay for business or whatever the case might be. In that amount of time that people spend on these cases and resolving all these issues and over just a couple dollars, you know, it's it's just not worth it. In that amount of time, you could have listed more items and sold more items that would have made you more money and would have brought more good things into your business, or you could have been sourcing or whatever it is. And it's also going to make you less stressed and less frustrated if you just settle whatever it is and move on with your day instead of worrying about it and letting it nag at you and eat away at your brain. Take the high road. All right. So by doing a lot of these little things, you're creating a positive experience for your buyers. And that means that they are more likely to come back and buy from you again. It also means that they're more likely to leave you positive feedback or a good review. And I'm sure most of us have heard this before, but if someone has a negative experience, they're like, I forget what the number is, but they're like 20 times more likely to let other people know and leave a bad review than if they have a good experience. Um, They're you know, people love negativity. They love telling other people about the negative things that have happened to them in their life. Negativity just breeds negativity. But if we're positive and proactive and do all these little things, they're more likely to say like, well, hey, this person was respectful and honest with me. I'll check out their closet or eBay store or whatever for my next Harley Davidson shirt or whatever the the item is. And the last thing we have for you, which I feel like I always talk to my kindergarten students about this, but never lie. Never lie to a customer. If you don't know the answer to a question, be honest, tell them, find it out, let them know that you're going to look into it. So don't always be truthful. If you mess up, don't lie, be honest, because honestly, that and it goes a long way. And I believe in karma. I mean, you want to, and you want to treat people how you want to be treated. So sometimes put yourself in the shoes of the customer, but definitely don't make stuff up. Make sure that you're truthful and that you are honest that you don't know the answer because with reselling, you might not know what to do. You might not know how to handle return if you're first reselling. So yeah. just be honest. Yeah. In the car business, you know, there was a lot to learn about all the different vehicles. I started out in a Subaru store. They didn't have a ton of different models, but they had enough. Plus, we sold used cars and all different makes and models. It was a lot of stuff to learn, especially because I wasn't a car girly, you know? I I knew nothing about cars. I knew I had an engine and four wheels, and I liked the color, and that was about it. So learning the mechanics and the safety features and how that differed from one model to another model and why Subaru was better than this other brand, whatever the case was, that took a lot of time and studying and learning. And you just learn that stuff over time. It's not something you can just snap your finger and download all that information. And the same thing with reselling. So if someone asks me, hey, does this, you know, Outback have a timing belt or a timing chain? And I'm looking at them like, I don't even know what the heck that is. I, you have a 50-50 chance of getting it right if you lie to them, you know, but you also have a 50-50 chance of getting it wrong. And if you get it wrong and they find out later, which they will, they always do, that totally eliminates their trust and belief in you. And they will never come back to you again. And they will tell people that you were dishonest with them. And the same thing goes with reselling. If you don't know what the rise of these pants are, don't lie and say, well, I think it's about, you know, whatever, how many, however many inches. I'll find out for you as soon as I can and then just measure it and send it off to them. Don't lie. Don't make things up. Just be honest and forthcoming and truthful with people. And that will go a long way. All right, guys, that's a wrap on today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Paycheck to Daycheck Reselling Podcast. Anything we mentioned in this episode will be linked down below in the show notes or description down below. Be sure to share this episode with anyone you think it will help and follow us on social media at P2D Podcast. Thanks again for listening. Keep working towards that day check.